can start. You can start. All right. So, um, Manashe, it's uh, a real pleasure for me to be able to uh, share the bioimmersion company with you. And uh, so I'm uh, Sean Bardell. I'm the CEO of the company, the founder of the company. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, you can see on the uh, slide that this is our mission statement, actually. Uh, working together, environmental protection and economic growth go hand in hand with good economic policies and advanced technologies to achieve sustainable economy environmental quality and social equity, well, we produce uh, a supplemental line called Therapeutic Foods, which uh, are uh, very precise uh, food type products, and, and yet we have a mission statement that really talks about bigger issues. And so I'm a, a zoologist, a ecologist, an educator, and uh, we all need to be uh, really uh, uh, cognizant of the fact that uh, unless we get uh, uh, our world into a place to where we're feeding the 800 million people who are starving and make it a socially equitable world, uh, we're, we're losing the battle. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so we're very, very big into uh, proper handling of the ecology of the earth, and I've been a, a part of that movement for for 30 years, and uh, even getting more uh, more rigid about it because it is um, a, a, a growing a growing product uh, a problem. But we're going to be talking today about uh, very precise instruments that can help with nutrition called therapeutic foods. Okay. And okay. I began my career in the medical field back in the mid-60s after receiving my degrees in education and zoology from the University of Washington, uh, I took a position overseas uh, as a public health official in uh, an area of the world that uh, is sort of off the shores of New Guinea, just above the equator on a little island called Yap um, Island, which uh, my job was to basically uh, uh, analyze the health issues that uh, Yappies people were dealing with and to design uh, disease eradication programs and sanitation programs to, to, to deal with whatever was going on with the people. What was very interesting uh, is that uh, in the two years I lived uh, amongst the Yappies people, now you need to understand this was a, such a remote area of the world that they, they didn't have any fast foods, they didn't have any refined foods, they didn't have any uh, cars. Everything was natural. Every, it was a truly organic environment. And, and because it was near the equator and they had plenty of rain because it was out in the ocean and they had lots of fish in the sea, they had an extremely healthy environment. So in the two years that I was analyzing uh, how people's health was, what it was very interesting is that it, uh, I discovered that they had none of the chronic diseases we're dealing with today. They didn't have any heart disease, diabetes, cancer. They didn't have any arthritic diseases. In fact, they weren't. They didn't have a lot of uh, obesity. They had a few people that were overweight, but most people were extremely fit, and they lived to a, an old age. And it showed me at my young age uh, the power of uh, an indigenous diet that isn't polluted by our modern fast food, canned foods uh, type of uh, eating patterns. And uh, I call this my Western Pricean experience. In fact, this is a picture of me back then. The gentleman on the left is actually a newspaper man from the New York uh, Times newspaper that actually traveled to Micronesia. And he came out to my area, which was an extremely remote area, and uh, interviewed me about uh, what we were trying to do in this region. And, um, and so this is uh, me today, and uh, I'm involved with a PhD program in ecological practices and social change, and to uh, help, help really turn around what's going on in the world. So let's get into therapeutic foods, which is, uh, I know, Amanish Che, the kind of the focus that we were to take today. And, um, you know, uh, food, of course, uh, has been the, the, the way in which we are healthy or not healthy uh, over the millennia. 
And uh, what we do to produce therapeutic food is we uh, apply uh, technology to uh, enable us to get foods from all over the world that have the highest of actives and then process them in a way to where we can actually deliver the actives in a very concentrated form. And so um, uh, we can start by uh, looking at uh, what we do when we develop the, the therapeutic foods. Uh, much like drugs, we look at objective markers in the body, and, and you'll, you'll see this. But, you know, that's the use of chemicals, and you just didn't worry about it back then. In fact, Peace Corps gave me a 55-gallon drum can of DDT that I had on the island that we used for head lice. And we'd sprinkle it on our head to deal with head lice, which you would never do that today. Okay. So okay. Those, those people had no diseases at all. Well, they had, uh, they had some tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. They had some uh, worm diseases uh, like Ascaris, uh, worm disease. Uh, they had uh, some filariasis, which is like elephantiasis, where you know your lymph system gets destroyed by a parasite. Uh huh. Uh, but it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't uh, an epidemic of those things. Just individuals here and there had those, and, and those are rather easy to to counteract. You know, it, 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 they're more uh, either a, a, a mosquito vector kind of thing, or with tuberculosis, you just need to open up your sleeping quarters and, and, and not have it so dark inside that kills the bacteria. So, you know, they, they it was, yeah, they were, they were extreme, no chronic disease other than wow. The, wow. those kind, none. Wow. Yeah, so that just goes to show the, the, the power of, of food in our, in our diet, and, and so, uh, in developing therapeutic foods, and uh, you under, have to understand I've been in this industry for 30 years, so I've owned nutraceutical companies where we're, we're promoting vitamins and minerals and, you know, CoQ10 and individual things, and, and I sold my nutraceutical company to actually create my therapeutic food company because I felt we needed to go back the direction of food, so ultimately I'm going to say that obviously we need to help people grow their own food locally yes, and, yes. and, and uh, with a lot of biodiversity and bring back the old traditions uh, that the farmers hopefully still know on how to do it without pesticides and herbicides. And, and so that's our push. It, it's under the broad umbrella, uh, umbrella of a concept called permaculture. And uh, if you haven't heard of permaculture, it's definitely something you should look into. And I know there's some incredible things happening in India yes. in regards to this. And uh, India is very exciting that way. And uh, so uh, brilliant people doing stuff there. And so anyway, but with therapeutic foods, you know, we're, what health practitioners are dealing with is all these very, very sick people whose bodies are really starving for real food. And until we get our food system right, this is a way to kind of start dealing with some of these illnesses by giving their bodies the concentrations of foods that their bodies desperately need. So you can see on the slide right now, we're talking about uh, all foods not created equally. In other words, depending on the region where the food's grown and or the, the variety of the food, some foods have more nutrients in them than others. And when we source, we source for nutrient value, and yet when we give the product or create the product, we're giving the whole the whole food. Okay. So um, basically, we're not against technology. Uh, it's just using technology right uh, to work with nature so that we don't uh, mess up the the ecosystem. Okay. And so when we talk about the therapeutic foods, Manashe, we we can talk about it from a technological point of view. And I've broken it down into green technology, microbiome technology, and even patented technology because some of our processes, the manufacturing processes, are, are patented tech uh, processes. So uh, just in terms of green technology, uh, again, because of the, the modern communication systems we have, I can source all over the world. I can source in India. I can source in all manner of places. And if you do things right, I can even bring products to my manufacturing uh, facilities in in America that originated in India and still have them vital. 
And so uh, when we usually when we bring a, a material in a berry to um, uh, put it out in a dried form, we like to use freeze drying technology because you you don't employ any heat. In fact, you it's a negative heat. It's minus 120 degrees C to freeze dry uh, any uh, food substance. So and do, that, you also so you're basically maintaining the enzymes. Right? Yeah, you're right. exactly because heat destroys enzymes okay. and heat destroys things like polyphenols, which are the a actives that are anti-inflammatory and antioxidants when it comes to berries. And so, yeah, you're right. Enzymes and and uh, classes of molecules such as the polyphenols, and, and I'll show you more on that. And then when we do um, um, extraction of, say, the polyphenols, certain parts of the, the plants, we either do alcohol extraction or water extractions. And then uh, always uh, what we do is um, use uh, uh, high liquid, uh, high performance uh, liquid chromatography to assay uh, the ingredients. So after we've done all of our freeze drying and all the different processing, and we have what we would call the finished product, then we assay it for its active to make sure that we haven't uh, in any way through the manufacturing process destroyed uh, what we're trying to accomplish. And of course, it goes without saying there can't be any herbicides or pesticides present in the materials. And uh, we uh, co-venture or collaborate is a better word with many manufacturing entities and many farmers and uh, scientists from all over the world uh, to produce these products. And so let's talk uh, now about uh, some of our products. So uh, the first one uh, is called Wild Blueberry Daily. And uh, we picked the blueberry because uh, we, of course, live in North America. And uh, the, the United States Department of Agriculture did a survey of all the berries in North America to find out which berry had the highest ORAC score. Now, ORAC stands for Oxygen Radical Absorbent Capacity. In other words, it, it's the ability of a fruit to absorb free radicals. It, it isn't necessarily a fruit. It can be any kind of material. What, but that measurement is a scientific uh, unit of measurement of how well a substance can neutralize free radicals. And so if it has a high ORAC score, it means that it is, it's got a good capacity. And the little blueberry that comes from Nova Scotia, which is the sort of the, 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 the uh, eastern part of Canada along the Atlantic, it, there are, those provinces up there are called the maritime provinces. And there, there's a low bush blueberry up there called the, the wild blueberry that is packed with polyphenols. And so that's, that's the berry that we, we use. And, and a subclass of molecules within the category polyphenols are the anthocyanins. And anthocyanins are very powerful antioxidants and anti-inflammatories. In fact, they even cross the blood-brain barrier and can reduce inflammation in the brain. And for that very reason, uh, this product will actually help improve losses in short-term memory. And uh, of course, many people today are suffering from neurological diseases. And we don't have to mention the uh, MS and ALS and <coughs> Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's, or, yes. yes. All these things are the result of basically oxidative damage are happening to the nervous system in the brain and depending on the disease through the rest of the body. And the nervous system and the immune system are particularly um, sensitive to toxins and pathogens. And, and the reason for that is the cell membranes of these two tissues, the nervous system and the immune system, those two systems of the body, the cells of those two systems, have more receptor sites in their membranes than any of the other cells of the body. They have between 200,000 and 2 million receptor sites. And, and a receptor site is a potential site where a toxin can click onto the, the membrane and then cause 
a toxicity in that cell and cause a lysing or a destruction of the cell and initiate free radical damage and, and the, the whole inflammatory process. And so uh, the blueberry clearly protects nervous tissue. And, and so, that's why they say that blueberry has a lot of antioxidants. antioxidants. Yes. Yes. Uh, antioxidants and anti-inflammatories. In fact, remember I mentioned that we, we measure markers in the body. So a, a marker is, is an objective measure that a doctor can look at or a scientist can look at to see if uh, something good is happening in regards to the product actually being in the body. So, f for example, in terms of inflammation, uh, there's, a, there's a molecule called NF-kappa-beta, which uh, if it's high in the blood, if you take the blood of people and you find that it has high NF-kappa-beta levels, that means that their body is in a pro-inflammatory state. And you know, chronic inflammation is a problem across the board in the world today. Yes, yes. And, and so if you can lower uh, chronic uh, NF-kappa-beta levels, you really are lowering inflammation throughout the body. And blueberry lowers NF-kappa-beta. Uh, COX-2 is another inflammatory pathway. And in fact, oftentimes people who have inflamed gastrointestinal tracts, uh, whether it's Crohn's or, or just inflammatory or irritable bowel syndrome, uh, they oftentimes have uh, activated their COX-2 pathways and the blueberry lowers COX-2. So the blueberry is not only good for the brain in helping to reduce inflammation in the brain, but it also is helpful to the, for the gastrointestinal tract. And then isoprostane, the bottom uh, word there, is a marker that if isoprostane levels are high, uh, that means that you have a lot of uh, lipid oxidation that's going on in the body. So maybe you have oxidized bad cholesterol that's happening, LDL cholesterol. And you know, oxidized LDL cholesterol is a really dangerous free radical especially in regards to cardiovascular disease. Yes. yes. And, and so uh, uh, blueberry lowers all of these things. It lowers isoprostane levels. It lowers COX-2 levels. It lowers NF-kappa-beta levels. And of course, we test these things through the various scientists around the world that we collaborate with. And that's the reason we went to the blueberry, is it, it was so exciting. Now, if a person's chronically inflamed, they are uh, using up stem cells needlessly. And stem cells, you know, we all have a defined amount of stem cells that we're sort of blessed with as we're born. And when a person is using up their stem cells uh, this way, they're shortening their lifespan. And so uh, chronic inflammation is a big problem. And that's why, again, bringing in the power of blueberry into the body uh, is very important. And so you can see, uh, uh, you know, any blueberry, of course, is good. But we went with the blueberry from Nova Scotia because it was rated the number one. And that's, that's why we associated that one. So I'm going to kind of go through these uh, uh, slides. Also, uh, as you see the slide here on cancer, very interestingly, blueberry blocks varying stages of cancer development. Uh, you can see there the word angiogenesis. When, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it blocks uh, the vascularization of tumors. So a lot of doctors who deal with uh, sort of a, a cancer oncologists who've tuned into the blueberry use that routinely with their patients. And just for prevention purposes, so someone should be taking the daily every day. And that's why we call it uh, wild, blueberry, wild blueberry daily. In fact, just for your information, it takes us three quarters of a cup of blueberries to fill one capsule. Oh, and when we, oh wow. wow. Yeah, and when we actually uh, fill a capsule with anything, uh, we have a choice of using some sort of flowing agent, which is an excipient like uh, mag sterate or silicon dioxide. We've made the choice that we don't use any excipients. We just simply slow the manufacturing process down to where we can fill a vegetarian capsule with just the product and not any flowing agents. Uh, and that, that way we maintain for the patient uh, their ability to just get 
the uh, actual ingredients without any additives in there. The only other thing that they would be getting in is the vegetarian capsule. So this isn't a gelatin capsule, an animal-derived capsule. It's just a, a vegetarian capsule. So this is a great product for a vegan. And you can see here in the ingredients in a capsule we put on 150 milligrams of the blueberry extract and 350 milligrams of the whole uh, high active fruit. And the extract is the purple part. So what we do is we do a water alcohol extraction of the, just the purple part of the blueberry because in uh, research at uh, several uh, very high institutions like Tufts University is one, uh, you will see that uh, they use 150 milligrams of the of the extract uh, to reverse uh, Alzheimer's and also to reverse um, uh, senility in, in in the brain. And so uh, we could talk more about that perhaps at the end. I, I want to kind of move through, but if you go to uh, the link to our website and you click in the library on the home page and you click on the dossier for wild blueberry and read the monograph, you're going to read some very exciting stuff about uh, reversing uh, brain aging uh, by the actual scientists who've done the work. Yeah, so it looks, so like, the wild, the looks like the wild, wild berry is a very important tax uh, blue, uh, uh, antioxidant. Uh, antioxidant. I'm sorry, Manasseh, say that again? So the wild so blueberry is a is a very good antioxidant. It's a good antioxidant. It's a good anti-inflammatory. Yes. And actually, yes. in the animal research, it shows that it actually initiates nerve regrowth. So it's neurotropic. Okay. In okay. the animal models, they they looked at brain neurons actually regrowing because of ingesting the blueberry. And what is the dosage basically if one has to take? So. It? Um, in fact, uh, how much, uh, do we have time for me to digress on some of these things, or how are we doing on time? No, you have your time. Uh, in yeah. fact, uh, uh, it, when you go to the library and you read the monograph, you'll see uh, uh, a, a scientist by the name of James Joseph, who's the chief neuroscientist at Tufts University. And he has basically demonstrated with rat uh, models, animal little rats that he, uh, uh, for example, in one of his experiments we cite, uh, he had senile old rats. They were so old that their brains were unable to be uh, trained in rat maze behavior, you know, where you, s you get them to r run a maze to seek a reward. He couldn't do that with these old rats because they couldn't be taught anymore. They were just too old. Their brains were oxidizing away, as, as all of our brains do as we get older. And, and so what he, what he uh, did then is he fed those little rats um, over a period of four months a blueberry extract that he made in the lab. And within four months, he had those rats running the rat mazes again like a young animal, and they could be taught. And what he noticed, he measured NF-kappa beta. He measured isoprostane. And he noticed in the old animals, before the feeding of the blueberry, the isoprostane level, the fat lipid oxidation marker, was very high, which meant their, their, their brains were literally a hotbed of free radical activity. And, and after four months, the levels of isoprostane were down to the level of a young animal. And uh, corresponding to that, these little animals could uh, be taught again. Not only that, but their physical abilities came back to some degree. They weren't quite the uh, feeble old animals, but their, some of their ath natural athleticism came back. So as their brain goes, so does their, their uh, physical abilities. And you know, the most important thing we have to protect in our body is our brain, because it is the center of our, our consciousness. And anybody who's experienced Alzheimer's in the families can really attest to that. Okay. So, so blueberry is incredibly important. And so, I mean, berries are in general, but we went with the blueberry because there's so much wonderful research about it. Okay. Okay. okay now, the next one you see in front of you right now is cruciferous sprouts. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, when we talk about something like blueberry or cruciferous sprouts, we're talking about products that are coming into the body 
to deal with the whole issue of oxidative stress and in trying to reduce uh, inflammation and oxidation that's going on in the body. Now, in the case of cruciferous sprouts, uh, we're look, we were looking for seeds to grow into sprouts that had very high levels of glucosinolates and sulforaphanes. In other words, these are molecules we were looking for in these, these uh, sprouts. And because uh, cruciferous sprouts are sprouts like broccoli sprouts, uh, daikon radish sprouts, clover, uh, uh, kale sprouts, mustard sprouts, these very musty, sulfur, sulfury containing uh, plants. These are the kind of plants that have lots of sulforaphanes in them. And what happens when you ingest something as powerful as, as these sprouts? It the sulforaphane molecules stimulate the uh, genetics of every cell to start producing what are called P2P enzymes. Mm -hmm. You can see that at the bottom of this slide. And those are uh, actually stand for phase two proteins. And <clears throat> so they're enzymes that are proteins and they're phase two. And um, uh, roughly there are 24 of these enzymes that are in the body and their job is to detoxify the body, to protect the body against free radicals. Uh, in terms of liver cells, they are responsible for maintaining the functionality of what's called phase two liver detox, mm -hmm. which is, mm -hmm. is very important for detoxifying. Detox, detox. Uh -huh. And uh, people, animals that uh, are people, uh, but they've done more studies on this thing that I'm just going to say with animals, where they neutralize their ability to produce phase two enzymes, uh, uh, are very sickly, they um, uh, have many cancers, and they live about 20 percent uh, shorter lifespans than animals that have a, a robust phase two enzyme production. So what we wanted to see is by taking this product, can we increase the cellular output of phase two enzymes? And we decided to look at liver cells with a group of people. And we were able to actually, in looking at having people take this product uh, two teaspoons a day over 20 days, they could increase their phase two enzymes by 2.6 times. That's a lot. And so what we're doing is basically enhancing their body's own internal ability to produce these critical antioxidants. So let's keep going. Now why did you, um, um, why did you decide to sprout it? And why just not Well, because uh, sprouts really concentrate the, uh, the glucosinolates, these, these phase two enzymes. When you have a, a fully grown uh, broccoli plant or kale or mustard or, or radish. Uh, those are obviously very healthy things to eat in the raw, but if you're really looking for a concentrated amount of these things, then sprouts, uh, the, you know, because sprouts are trying to protect and feed the young plant. And so they really concentrate these, these phase two enzymes. So you can get a lot more when you do it with sprouts. Okay. Okay. And that's the reason. <clears throat> and so, and so, remember, we we would say, you know, when people finally get their dietary act together and start eating a lot of green vegetables and fresh, you know, fresh from their local market that that are organic, organic, uh, organic yes. you know, we these kinds of things won't be quite so necessary. But right now, people's bodies are so beat down by the lack of good food, by the pollution, by the pathogens that travel all over the world, by the um, stress that their bodies are under, uh, uh, psychological stress that shuts down their bodies. You know, our bodies are overwhelmed and so we created therapeutic foods to really counteract that. But the, the big agenda is to really get our whole farming ecosystem world uh, politics right. Okay. 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 So, um, 
this product, uh, uh, we're talking here in this slide about certain enzymes that are produced by the liver and how this product actually impacts these enzymes. It says, we say in the slide here, it reduces CETP levels and increases PO1 levels. CETP stands for cholesterol ester transfer protein. And if it's high in the blood, you're going to find a, a patient has low levels of HDL. HDL is good cholesterol. And uh, you don't want to have low levels of HDL. In fact, that's a very predictive marker for cardiovascular disease. So you, you, so you want high levels of that kind of cholesterol. And this product actually inhibits the production of CETP and therefore raises the HDL levels. PON1 is another enzyme that comes out of the liver. And it's kind of the opposite. You want high blood levels of PON1 because when you have high blood levels of PON1, you will have low levels of bad cholesterol, which is LDL cholesterol. And this product actually enhances the liver production of PON1. So you'll find an elevation of these. And, and so we look at some numbers here in terms of actual patients. Doing a trial with patients on this product, we raised their HDL levels by 20% and we reduced their oxidized LDL levels by 69%. Now, LDL by itself is bad cholesterol because uh, uh, you're afraid it's going to become oxidized. When it's oxidized, it's an extremely dangerous free radical. And so, you know, when you have a combination of oxidized LDL and low HDL, that is a, a, a blood profile of lipids that is really conducive to heart disease. And so this product reverses that in a very powerful way. And so you also can see markers like uh, 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 peroxides in the blood or lipid peroxides, and it reduces them by 20%. So this is a a very powerful product, not only for cardiovascular reasons, but also for anti-cancer reasons. And so when you think about combining this product with, uh, with something like the blueberry, you're bringing in the power of the sprouts to enhance your own body's antioxidant power. You're bringing in the power of the blueberry and borrowing its power of the polyphenols and using that to protect yourself. So very powerful ways of protecting yourself. And when we reflect back, Manashe, on the, the people of Yap, why, why they were healthy, is they were constantly taking in these fresh things. So they were sprouting things, and uh, actually I like, like they, they were near the tropical area. Uh, there's a lot of research on the coconut milk. Yes, exactly. Actually, they didn't sprout things. They, they, were, they were actually quite primitive in the way they a actually cooked things, you know, dealt with food. They just pretty much picked it and ate it. Uh, or if they cooked it, they had some big cast iron pots that they would throw things in and then, and then uh, um, kind of make soups. Uh, and, and, so, and actually when they would uh, bake things in the coals, the fire, they would uh, wrap it in uh, uh, banana leaf. Wow. And just kind of bake it in there. So they, I mean, actually they could put out a, a, a actually a rather very elegant uh, meal, sort of a sort of a tropical meal that was just incredible. You know, if they wanted to put the effort in, but on a day-to-day -day level, they 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 were much more relaxed on how they cooked things. Wow. Okay. Okay. And they didn't okay. hardly use any spices. Spices. Uh, the only spices they would use would be would be like certain leaves. They 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 had uh, lemongrass kind of stuff that they would use a lot, and and so things were very tasty. But you know what? You got so used to just eating natural stuff, you know. And of course, it was, you know, not prick, picked before it was ripened. It was always picked at the time it was ready to be eaten. Yeah, it was it was an amazing place, but you know we can pretty much do that around the world now. We just need to do things locally. Mm, okay.
and, gotcha. and develop the technology of going back to locally so it's you're not transporting things you know gazillion miles to to uh, to to eat on a daily basis okay now you have this product um is it all very That's the similar? Goal. Okay, now let's talk about yeah. uh, microbiome technology. <clears throat> and so when we talk about the microbiome, that's really a very, very big topic now in, uh, in science. Uh, we're talking, now you're looking at the National Institute of Health's definition of the microbiome. And let's, let's read it. It says the microbiome is the full collection of microbes, bacteria, fungi, viruses, etc that naturally exist within the human body. So you think of uh, your lungs, you think of uh, other oral cavities, you think of your gastrointestinal tract from the mouth to the anus, the small, large intestines. That is so packed with uh, bacteria and, and fungus and, and protozoa. I mean, we have a whole other population in our gut over and above our, our human cells. and. Uh, the NIH, uh, since the uh, finishing up with the Human Genome Project and typing the human genome, are now wanting to type the, uh, the microbiome that's in the gut of human beings for very, very good reasons. And here's a statement from the, uh, actually, NIH. It's, a, it's the, the Human Microbiome uh, Project is what it's actually now called. And it says, our bodies harbor 10 times more microbials or uh, microbial organisms than human cells. Let's think about that for just a second. Our bodies are composed of 10,000 billion uh, cells. Sense. The human cells, we have, or you could say it this way, we have 10 trillion human cells. The microorganisms in our gut in number are 100 trillion. So there's really 10 times more of them in our gut than there are of our human cells. But look at the rest of this sentence. It says their genome, in other words, their ability to produce enzymes and proteins endows us with physiological capacities that we have not had to evolve on our own and thus are both a manifestation of who we are genetically and metabolically and a reflection of our state of well-being. That is a statement to actually meditate on and, and fully grasp because what they're admitting, and now keep in mind, this isn't just a group of holistic people talking about Mother Earth. This is actually the, the, the highest of the high in terms of the American science community at NIH admitting that what the, 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 the constituents of the bacteria and other microorganisms in your gut have a huge, huge uh, part to play in your overall health and well-being. And research now on that is uh, full going. Now, myself, I've been involved in this knowledge for about 30 years. So uh, we're, we, I lecture uh, around the, the country, really, basically, on the whole issue of the gut. And so um, I don't think I'll go a long ways into this right now. We're just talking about the whole nomenclature of uh, microorganisms mm -hmm. and uh, let's, let's kind of move on. We can talk about taxonomy and all these things maybe at another, another meeting. But it's very important to properly identify organisms and to um, know how they work together. And so uh, that's where the science that is we're just beginning to tap into really understanding uh, all that's going on with these very complex uh, interaction that's going on with the microorganisms in our gut and our human body cells. There's a huge communication system that's going on between their communicating molecules and our body and, and uh, the person whose body has that correctly correct ecology going on down there is the person that's going to be most healthy. Are you still with me? With you. We're okay? We're okay. Okay, so let's look at uh, some actual product that, that uh, we, can, we can bring into the body that has to do with uh, probiotics. 
Um, now, so when you said about the, the, the bacteria and uh, in our body, was it somewhere connected to the biofilm? Well, biofilm. I mean, th th that's part of the part of the um, concepts that need to be looked at further. Biofilms are reality. Many scientists don't feel that biofilms are reality in the gastrointestinal tract because there, you have so much cell turnover. You know, your the membrane, the the, the lining membrane of the small and large intestines. Uh, have a complete turnover. I forget, it, it, I think it's a couple weeks, and you have a total new cell lining. So the body, the body is a very changing membrane. And uh, so uh, biofilm, if, if you're going with the concept of biofilm, then uh, you know, uh, you'll have certain therapies that you feel you want to do with biofilm. These, these organisms, uh, they you know, I don't know how to address them in regards to, say, gobbling up biofilm. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, I mean, these organisms, in fact, the organisms you're looking at right now, the acidophilus, the longum, the rhamnosus, the plantarum, and the thermophilus, uh, were, or, are, are organisms that you have in, in you, they're in plants, they're on plants, they're in foods. They've been used to make yogurts, especially Thermophilus. Uh, they, they, they're uh, organisms that have been evolved with human beings over the millennia. So they, they are very number one safe organisms. They're very good producers of uh, uh, enzymes to help us digest foods. They produce enzymes to help protect us against pathogenic organisms. They produce uh, what are called bactericins that are antibio antibiotic-like substances that inhibit various bad bacteria in our gut. And so these are the kinds of friendly organisms that one wants to grow in our gut. And because these are all human strains, strains that have been evolved with us, uh, they, 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 they can easily grow and colonize. And when they colonize in our gut, they then protect the membrane uh, to uh, its uh, uh, being uh, landed upon by yeast and, uh, say, fungus, and, and so they protect against and, and other toxins. They neutralize other toxins. In fact, um, in, this, in this particular product, we, uh, we, we selected these, these bugs to deal with toxins. For example, Mold toxin, mycotoxin, aflatoxin is an increasing problem in the in the world of, of, of moldy foods, and uh, mold toxin is extremely neurotoxic. And uh, these bugs, all five of these bugs, neutralize mold toxin. Uh, carcinogens, like when people fry meats and broil meats and barbecue red, and particularly red meats. They produce carcinogenic compounds such as heterocyclicamines, and these bugs, all of them, neutralize heterocyclicamines. So, in other words, when you're eating uh, barbecued uh, ribs or something like that, these bugs are going to neutralize those carcinogenic compounds. So, also, when you you get uh, food poisoning from salmonella, uh, these bugs protect against that food poisoning because they kill and inhibit the growth of salmonella. And so again, uh, that shows how these bugs help our body sort of survive uh, the increasing toxic toxicity of our foods and pathogenicity of our foods. Also, um, uh, no, I forgot what I was going to say. So I think that's, that's good on that. Um, and then we carry these bugs into the body using inulin, which is an organic fiber derived from chicory root. And uh, these bugs then consume the inulin, and they break the inulin down and produce a short-chain fatty acid called butyric acid, which heals the gut because it uh, allows the gut to have a healthy cell turnover. So this is the exact kind of armament that one needs to bring into their body 
to on a regular basis just to to protect the GI tract against pathogens. Now, that's one choice. Now, with our therapeutic foods, we have we have um, eight different probiotic or symbiotic products that um, uh, are for the gut. And uh, so you can see in this product uh, that, uh, in fact, let me back up for just a second. When I say symbiotic product, yes, I was about to ask you what is what yeah, is symbiotic product. It literally means a product that has probiotic in it and prebiotic in it. Okay. Okay. So, so a probiotic, of course, refers to good bacteria, and prebiotic refers to food for the bacteria. Right. Right. And so, and the, and then the word that encompasses both those is symbiotic. So, we call all our products symbiotic, but you can just, for the sake of your mind, you can just think of them. They're probiotics. So in this one, uh, now remember I said we work with different scientists around the world. So the, the one that we just looked at a second ago, the original, is a powder. And that one, if you take a teaspoon, you're getting 20 billion bug count of those bugs, and you're getting 4 grams of the fiber inulin. So the one we just looked at a second ago, I would, we call it the original symbiotic formula. I would also call that bugs and fiber good okay. bugs and fiber. This one is a result of our work with Bulgarian scientists. The other one was our work with American scientists. Now our Bulgarian scientists um, are exciting to work with because Bulgaria as a country has a very rich tradition of using fermented uh, foods and uh, uh, bacterial probiotic organisms in medicine. So they, they're really very advanced in that, and, the, and the, some of the, the bacteria they use, uh, we wanted to bring into our product, our products. So this product has the Bulgarian strains, and um, and so you can see that there's three three substances in this product. First of all, there's what we call supernatant, and you can see from what we uh, wrote here, supernatant is a combination of inactive probiotic cell populations, uh, and then we're saying the populations, uh, Lactobacillus bulgaricus, uh, Strep thermophilus, and Bifidobacterium, and their metabolites. Now let me explain this. What we do is we take Bulgaricus, the Thermophilus, and the Bifidobacterium, and we put them in a broth, and we allow them to grow in the broth and create a ferment. In other words, their metabolites. They express their metabolites. So that means enzymes. That means things like their uh, antibiotic-like substances that we call bactericins. That means, uh, and when I say enzymes, it's like digestive enzymes, or it's, uh, they produce lactic acids, so acids. Various kinds of peptides they produce. In fact, one of the peptides they produce are ACE inhibitor which will lower blood pressure. So what we do is we freeze dry all these byproducts of their metabolism. We freeze dry those and serve them up in the product. So the minute you take this product, you have these actives right from the get-go that are going in there and starting their killing and inhibiting. But we do one thing further with this supernate material, is we then heat up the material enough to actually kill these good bugs. So we kill the Bulgaricus, the Thermophilus, and the uh, bifidobacteria, but we, we only kill it to the point to where it's dead, but the, the cells themselves are whole. They aren't fragmented cells. And what that does when you serve up these sort of dead whole cells, that stimulates the immune system to kind of wake up, smell the roses, and come to the date table and do a better job of surveillance for potential pathogens. So it's, it's a stimulatory thing, and it's a very good thing. And that's what supernatant is. Now, that's the first part of what's in this product. The second part of what's in this product is actually freeze-dried live bugs. So you have longum, you have Bifidobacterium infantis, you have Lactobacillus casei, Lactobacillus acidophilus, Lactobacillus helveticus, Lactobacillus bulgaricus that's live, we haven't killed, Strep thermophilus that's live, we haven't killed, and um, that's it. So you have these 
live bugs that we put in there, and you can see it's a 15 billion count, but they're asleep until they're hydrated in the gut. Then they wake up and they start colonizing and growing, and as they're eating and consuming, they're producing the, the, the bactericins, uh, bactericins, et cetera, or they're also producing the supernate material. So, there, so you have the supernate right up front, then you have the, the bacteria that will grow and, and produce some more supernate, and you have inulin again as the fiber, organic inulin. So I could call this product also uh, bugs and fiber, but it's you know slightly different strains of bugs, slightly different concept because we're working with different scientists. Now, which one's better? Well, you know it depends on the individual. I mean, you, it, I, it, you can't say which one's better. You try, you try different things. You see how it works with your body. You see how these bugs colonize well. My feeling is that uh, why not do one bottle one month or two months and then switch to the other bottle and just. Do different things with your body. Bring in these different bugs. They're good bugs. One thing I like about supernatant is like you ferment it. The fermenting is, you ferment it, right? Yeah. Yes. And then you also, you kill it and then you mix it with the live bacteria. Uh, yes. Yes, exactly. Okay. 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 But yeah, then why do you have it. to kill it? Well, there's something about the whole cells uh, dead like that that stimulates the immune system in a in a in a very good way. Now I, I'm not clear on the science on that, Manashe, exactly what that is, but the dead whole cells is is very stimulatory to to the innate immune system. The sort of the front line defense that of uh, with things like macrophages and dendritic cells, uh -huh. those cells really kind of come alive and and are, are kind of discerning uh, not to hurt the good cells, but that, but they're more able to kind of defend. Okay, and what is the source again of this? The source? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Now, a source of the bugs? Yes. yes. Well, we, the bugs come from Bulgaria. Okay. There's, okay. there's strains that come from Bulgaria uh, on this one. The other one, the, the bugs come from America. Okay, okay, gotcha. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, so now, uh, you know, actually this one, the one you're looking at now, we, we designed specifically, uh, we were looking at a, a product like if you had to go into the hospital uh, that would help protect you against things like C. difficile and Staph aureus, you know, uh, infections that so many times people get it when they go into the hospital. Uh, you go in for minor surgery, you stay in the hospital two weeks, and you come out with a very serious gastrointestinal infection and uh, because you're on antibiotics in the, in, in, while you're in the hospital. So uh, this would be the, you know, uh, the product. Well, this is the product we tested to protect against those kinds of infections. Uh, but th it doesn't mean that you wouldn't take this product every day in just your everyday life. Yeah, we uh, usually use these products more as recommended for the kids with autism uh, who have clostridia issues. Yeah, exactly. Fabulous. This yes, and I will be trying it for my son very soon. Yeah, but you know, you mentioned autism. So doctors usually who deal with autism use this one or the original, the first one we talked about. Okay. The, the so yeah, the original yeah. works very well with autism too. That's okay. a very good okay. formula also. So you can, you know play with it either way. Yes, because I know uh, for Clostridia we use another um, lactobacillus uh, GG culture lab. Yeah, right. And, and, and when, you, when you say lactobacillus uh, uh, GG. GG, that's uh, the actual bug that that is, is rhamnosis. Well, what is it, the, sorry, what is it then? Well, that? GG, GG is, a, is a corporate name. You know, lactobacillus is a genus, right? That, yes. You know, in terms yes. of uh, taxonomy, yes. Lactobacillus yes. is a genus, but the species isn't GG. GG is the name that was given to uh, a, a strain of rhamnosus. Okay. The, the okay. species is rhamnosus. The actual two scientists who did the work on that rhamnosus, their two last names begin with G, so they call it GG. 
Oh, okay, because that has been very effective for the uh, for uh, for Clostridia. And yeah, it's and a, so it's so with design. you know, and interestingly, in this one, because I'm working with my Bulgarian scientists, they didn't put any of the rhamnosus in here. In my with my American scientists, we have the rhamnosus. Okay. So you could say we have the GG. Okay, gotcha. In the American one. And in the even supernatant, right? Right. Beg your pardon. And in supernatant. No, there's no there's no rhamnosus in uh, supernatant. But but still, it works on Clostridia. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. I mean, okay. we we didn't when we did the original, we weren't even try you know we didn't trial it against Clostridia. Clostridia, but we we put the rhamnosus in there, so it should work perfect. And it, and of course we know it does because because we had a lot of feedback from doctors. But with this one, uh, the, the, my Bulgarian scientists developed this one for me specifically for hospital type infections. Gotcha. So gotcha. and C difficile is probably the biggest, and so yeah yeah it definitely will deal with C difficile. So. You know, there's lots, lots we can say about this product, and of course, with any of the product, I'm going to say if you if you link your website to our website, uh, people can go and read and get yes, all the yes. ev information they want. If they go, if they go to the home page and they click on therapeutic foods, they're going to get a uh, bullet point presentation of each product, and then if they want to go deeper beyond a bullet point, then they should click on the library tab. And then they can go and get all sorts of what we call monographs, which are five and six page documents with references describing the product. Okay. So okay. let's kind of move through this to uh, some of our patented things. And like, <clears throat> for example, uh, we have a, a, a boron product that uh, uh, where the boron molecule is, um, is actually uh, developed by Serbian scientists actually that is a combination of two fructose molecules attached to boron and that's really how boron always is found in the food chain it's always found bound to carbohydrates and and so uh, we serve it up in a it's very water soluble very bioavailable and this has been a, a the boron products been dealing with uh, osteoporosis and osteoarthritis we have another patented molecule that's a chromium that we use for lowering blood sugar. And uh, actually, the little diagram at the bottom there, you can see uh, the, 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 the triangle in the middle, which represents the, the, the chromium ion. And then the, the four, three different shapes around it are actually n nucleotides from uh, brewer's yeast. So it's the, it's the DNA building uh, sugars from brewer's yeast that we have bound molecule to molecule on this and and uh, so there's no allergies possible here for from uh, brewer's yeast because these are too small but this is a very small molecule that's ex extremely bioavailable and very able to lower blood sugar levels for diabetes and those kinds of people and then we have uh, our beta glucan product which uh, is the patent has to do with how we uh, uh, process the oat bran to get the beta glucan fibers out. So uh, now let's and so let's let's move through this and get. Here's what the uh, the product for the osteoporosis, the um, the boron that's bound to two fructose. And so this one uh, uh, not only deals with uh, bone density issues, but in, it helps to increase bone density, but it also for osteoarthritis um, will reduce pain and swelling in joints. And, uh, and it also helps uh, to uh, increase uh, SOD levels and catalase levels, which are very important antioxidants. It increases steroid hormone levels and vitamin D levels. So it's kind of anti-aging that way. It's a, it's a quite an amazing little product. And so uh, when we I'm kind of moving quickly through this, a chromium, uh, you would take with a chromium like two capsules a day uh, to lower blood sugar. If the person has high blood sugar levels, 
this would be a very effective way to start uh, reducing them in a sort of a controlled way, one twice a day. And, uh, and so we'll get now in just a second to the beta glucan product, which is very similar. Here's the same bugs, and you can see there, uh, Benache, we got the, mm -hmm. the rhamnosis. Yes, yes. And, and so that's like your GG in here. Same thing as the original, same bugs, the American scientist. But we added in this one the oat bran beta glucan fibers, and we added the red beetroot. So it isn't just inulin.